Hi there, how you doing? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again with yet another deck tech for you today. Um, this is an updated version of one of the very first Commander decks I ever played in paper. Um, this was before I started playing on MTGO and got a bit too obsessed with MTGO for my own good probably. Um, but I started playing with this particular Commander back in the day when I first got into Commander, around about 2014, so what, eight years ago now when I really first started playing Commander. Um, and this was one of the first decks, this Commander is one of the first Commanders I built at that time. Now the deck has been significantly updated by then, well I say significantly, it's just included cards and things have come out. But I figured I play it on MTGO occasionally, it's probably worth talking about here today. So I thought I'd run the rid get the video up and running and show you what we're talking about. So, the very first Commander deck I ever built was this. Krenko, Mob Boss. Um, <laughs> back in the day, this was one of the key cards. Um, it was very good in Commander. Uh, in, even in Constructed, it saw there was a top end of mono red deck. So if you don't know what it does, it's two and two red for a three, three legendary goblin. Warrior, and it has a tap, create X11 one, one red goblin creature tokens where X is the number of goblins you control. Now, back in the day, there weren't that many goblins. There were some goblins around, it had a lot of other things on it. Um, and as time develops and I played more magic, I updated my paper deck. And to the extent I'm now actually, the video that I'm showing you today, when I show you the deck list, and go through the deck list in a minute, is very accurate to what I actually play in real life now when I'm playing this deck. So, it's mono red. There is literally just red lands in it with a couple of extra bits. Um, Running up rooms just to deal with anything in protection for red. That's the only reason it's in here. It's the only desert and it's a one shot thing. Bear that in mind. Everything else is a mountain apart from, well, the other deserts here. So that's the other desert. And then looming spires just in case I need to give something plus one, plus one and first strike. Um, the only ramp that's in the deck is Sol Ring. You don't need it in this deck. Ramp is an afterthought in this deck entirely. <laughs> this deck is purely about getting many goblins down as you can and just keep on attacking with them. So, one of the key cards though is Brightstone Ritual. Um, when you get five or six goblins into play, dropping this and then playing out some of the really big stuff you've got at the end here, like Chancellor of the Forge or Mob Rule or Banefire is really easy with Brightstone Ritual. Um, you know, and I've done it before now where I've paid one mana, had five goblins in play and used it to cast Coat of Arms. This is a really key card. It is worth getting hold of one if you haven't got one from Onslaught um, if you're playing this. So yeah, go for that. Anyway, beyond that, Burst Lightning for a little bit of removal. Um, two damage if you kick it for it. If you do the one and the five, you get four damage instead. Um, it's really just a shock. And then we go with the Goblins. Fanatical Firebrand. Um, Haste, sack it, deal one to something. Foundry Street Denison, whenever the red, red creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. Frenzy Goblin, um, to stop creatures blocking when you attack. Arsonist, when it dies, you ping something. Goblin Grenade, sack a goblin off, deal five damage to any target. Um, Goblin Motivator is one of the updates I've done on here. Um, it's in my real life deck as well, it gives a creature haste. Um, Legion Loyalist is really quite good in this deck. It gives all your all your goblins first strike, which is really helpful when most of them are sort of like one power, one toughness. Um, and the trample bit is really quite good fun. <laughs> Magma Spray is another little bit of removal. It can also exile something that's been dealt damage. Mog Fanatic to sack it and deal a damage. Raging Goblin for the haste. Skirt Prospector is another one of the key cards. It helps with your mana ramp entirely. Um, you will. There are ways of creating tokens in this deck. You can soak the to goblin tokens off, get some extra red mana, speed up the way in which you do things. So bear that in mind. Um, Torch Carrier is really there to give another creature haste if we need to. <coughs> Sorry. The only time that really happens is we sack this off when we've got Chancellor of the Forge in play and we just want to get in for that um, extra bit of damage. So bear that in mind. Um, Elixir of Immortality is here because we do sacrifice a lot of our creep goblins off and therefore getting them back into our library is really important sometimes. And then, like I said, Soul Ring is the only ramp. One of the more recent updates to the deck is Battlecry Goblin from Avengers in the Gotham... Avengers? Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Um, it's a really good goblin in this deck, obviously. Um, 
we're only playing 34 lands, but considering most of our stuff is one drops, two drops, three drops, is never that problem. You usually have some spare mana floating around where you can pay the one and the red to give all your goblins plus one and haste until the end of turn and get the extra goblin token in and attacking. So it's worth it. <laughs> um, Bloodmark Mentors here, just to give all our creatures first strike as a whole spell thing and it's also a goblin it's really you know people don't expect goblins to have first strike it does surprise them sometimes cavalcade of calamity is a win semi win condition um it's really there for when you can't find coat of arms or a pump goblin and so you can keep make sure that all your little one ones when you attack with them do some extra damage when they go in uh dragon fodder creates a couple of goblin tokens Dragon Lord Servant is in here as a 1 3. It's more of a blocker than an attacker. Um, we don't have any dragons in the deck, but we do have this. So, you know, the cost and cost reduction of the dragon is not that great. But a 1 3 blocker really does help in the early game, especially when you're playing rush decks. You'd be surprised how many little one, 2 1s or X1 creatures don't attack when you see Dragon Lord Servant down. So, it's quite useful. Goblin Bombardment is a way to sacrifice our creatures off if we need to. Um, if we've got a lot of creatures in play and this in play and someone casts Wrath of God, we can stack them all off and ping the person with Wrath of God or whatever. Um, and it's quite good fun. A little bit of an extra win condition. <laughs> Goblin Instigator is basically because it comes into play as two mana for two, powers, two power worth of creatures. Lookout is to sacrifice a goblin. Goblin creatures get plus two, plus nothing until the end of turn. This is great if you've got your goblins having first strike. So either from the um, Legion Loyalist or coming through from the Bloodmark Mentor, tapping this sack in a goblin off and giving all your creed goblins plus two, plus none, nothing until the end of turn really makes those first striking three, one goblins really quite difficult to deal with. Likewise, Impact Tremors is something that does make you a bit of a target if you're playing this on MTGO. But at the end of the day, when a goblin comes into play, you get to deal one damage to each opponent and you will be getting lots of creatures into play quite quickly, quite rapidly. Krenko's in as well, another goblin command, um, goblin creator sorcery that gives you two more goblins. Goblin war, mar mob war marshals here as well, two power for two mana and then when it dies um, you get another one. So it basically is three, three worth of power over two turns, it's not too bad. Um, Flame McKeld is a new is a new inclusion. I am playing this in my deck. I'm not that impressed with it at the moment. It does tend to get um, disenchanted quite regularly. But when I've had the couple of times I've had it go off in the games where I've played Krenko and got up to the level three, um, that really does kind of win the game quite happily for you a lot of the time. Warren Inskate is great with a double strike. And when it deals combat damage to an opponent, you may put a goblin card in your play from your hand into play. Fantastic ability, you can't fault it, especially with some of the goblins we've got coming up in a little while. Um, Wily Goblin is purely there to create the treasure token, so it basically costs you one red mana to do it um, because it gives you the treasure as well. So it's just a yeah, little bit of value later in the game if you need it. Hero's Blade um, basically comes in to pump Krenko when it comes in. One of the things I've discovered with Krenko is there's a lot of spells out there that do three damage to creatures. Not so many that do five damage. We've got this in play and then we play Krenko, Mob Boss, or one of the other legendaries we're going to be talking about. It does tend to protect them a little bit, which is quite cool. Howling Mine, because we need the card draw. Um, you do empty your hand really quickly and you are sitting there doing nothing for a while. But with Howling Mine in play, that tends to limit those problems. Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots are both in the deck as well. They're to protect Krenko from targeted removal. So hopefully you'll have one of them in play when you cast Krenko. Moving on to the three drops. Um, Clamor Shaman for the right side of it. Um, obviously you're probably going to give it haste more the times so you can give it plus one plus one. But giving it haste and attacking and then a creature can't block does let you get the damage piled through. Goblin Assault's good fun as well. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with haste, but it does mean all your goblins have to attack if able. So it's one of those things that's worth playing after your attack phase um, or in your second main phase on any turn you draw it. Don't play it in case you want to hold back for a little thing. But then you've got to remember after that, all your creatures are going to be going into the red zone every turn. Goblin Rabble Masters, very good. Uh, <laughs> you get a Goblin on your turn, and whenever it attack, when when Goblin Rebel Master attacks, he gets plus one plus zero for each other attacking um, Goblin, and you know Goblin creature again, but it does give you the same drawback as Goblin Assault, and that they have to attack every turn. 
again it's a second main phase creature you want to play I mean you can play this one in the first phase because obviously it'll come in it hasn't got haste itself so it can't attack the turn it comes into play but bear it in mind and just maybe play around it if need be Krenko Tin Street Kingpin is the other version of Krenko Mob Boss um, this one's as good as well this is worth protecting with Swift Fruit Boots or Lightning Greaves um, purely because when you attack with it you put a counter on it makes it bigger so the first time you attack with Krenko you're going to get two 1-1 one -one goblins um, if you've got any other way, if you've pumped it some other way, so like you've had Hero's Blade in play, and then you've put Swift Foot Boots on it as well, it's going to be really stupid really quickly, and there will be a lot of goblins coming to play that your opponent will not be able to deal with, I promise you that much. Um, Legion Warboss, um, another one that produces 1-1 one -one goblin tokens when it comes on the beginning of combat. Obviously those tokens produced by the Warboss have to attack as well, but it's got Mentor, so it does make some of your goblins a little bit bigger when you get there. Um, Pashi Clean Mons is in as well and whenever it dies or another goblin dies it pings a target um, and you can sacrifice a goblin for 4 mana and create some more goblins as well you'll be surprised when this happens how well it works with Coat of Arms Reckless Butcher just to give everyone the um, surge cost or you know if you can kick it uh, or pay the surge cost and everything gets haste which is really nice little surprise for some players um, Shared Animosity is an upgrade that I've recently got hold of in real life and I've got hold of on here. Um, and it's just like a mini version of Coat of Arms, it's just that it pumps the power instead of the toughness as well. So bear it in mind when you're attacking. Togo Weaponsmith. The rocks are quite nice. If you don't want to attack with your goblins and you've got a few rocks kicking around because you've done slightly hit the land fall trigger for want of a better phrase. Um, equip them to a goblin, sack them off, it's not too bad. Yes, it's a little bit expensive, it costs you two mana to do something too damage, but if it'll save your goblin from having to attack that you're worried about it's going to die, go for it. Fiery Tempest just here is a bit of removal, um, it's three mana removal, this probably should re really be Lightning Bolt now. Like I say, this is a direct copy of my real life deck, so I haven't changed this to Lightning Bolt in my real life deck yet, I am going to, but at the moment, this is what I'm still playing. Goblin Chieftain's in, all the goblins have haste and get plus one, plus one. Goblin General attacks, goblin creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Um, goblin King to give them all mountain walk. You kind of get where this is going, there's a lot of pump for goblins. <laughs> um, goblin War Chief is one of the key ones. Dropping down the cost of some of your goblins by one mana can make a lot of difference if you're thinking about Goblin War Chief, you know. Battle Cry, Blood Mentor, um, Servant to a certain degree, Instigator, Lookout. You know, war Marshal, it's quite useful, and giving them all haste isn't a bad idea either. Hordling Outburst, 3 mana for 3 one ones. same idea again. Um, Hazaret's Monuments here, um, basically you're going to get to a point where you need to get about 8 or 9 lands in play and that will last you through the game, so you might as well have this in play as well so you can dump those extra lands when you cast a creature spell and draw an extra card, it could be useful. Also, Whisper Silk Cloak is in here. I've put this in here purely in my real life deck and on here to equip only to Krenko Tin Street Boss. Um, getting that through unblocked so it keeps getting bigger and making more and more goblin tokens is a real benefit, so bear that in mind. That's kind of the bulk of the deck. Then we've just got the little bits left over here. Um, empty the Warrens. <laughs> Who doesn't like a bit of storm occasionally? Um, you're going to use this quite a bit. You are going to find at points in the game you'll have five or six goblins in play, you've cast three or four spells, you've still got some mana available, or you've got a Skirk Prospector or a Brightstone Ritual in hand. You're going to cast them to the Warrens and get all those extra goblin creatures. Go for it. It's funny, the looks on your opponent's faces in real life is hilarious. I'm not sure what people's faces look like on MTGO when I do this, but I'm sure they're putting the same faces my friends play when I play this at my club. Goblin Ringleader is slightly more expensive version of Goblin Matron if I remember correctly. Um, I am trying to get hold of a Goblin Matron for my real life deck. That will be added to here when I get it but I'm keeping this one pretty simple as I say. Um, this is quite nice you reveal the top four cards and put all the Goblin cards in your hand so it does cycle through your deck. Pirate's Pillage is purely just to draw some cards and get a couple of treasures. There's no other reason for it. You need a little bit of card draw in here alongside Howling Mine. Um, Likewise, Beetleback Chief comes in, it's four mana for four powers worth of three creatures. Nothing wrong with that from my point of view. 
Etherworks Marvel is here because we do sacrifice a lot of our creatures or our creatures go to the graveyard quite easily. And having that energy come into play, we don't use it for anything else, um, but hitting six energy is not difficult. Looking at the top six cards of the libraries and putting something into play is fantastic. Um, so just bear it in mind. Likewise, Font of Mythos is here again, just for the extra card draw so we can keep make sure our hand is full up with things we can cast every turn. Volcanic Rush is something that someone put me onto a few weeks back, and I've added it to both this and my real life deck. Um, plus two, plus nothing, and tramples the end of the turn, along with maybe uh, the first strike ability is just really good. <laughs> um, so bear that in mind when you're doing it. Siege Gang's here just as a nod to my past. Siege Gang is one of the first commanders, um, cards, sorry, I keep saying commander, it's not commander. It's one of the first cards I had in a deck that won me a tournament, um, so I always like to have a little Siege Gang in where I can. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker is very nice. It comes in, okay, it can't copy legendaries, but you know, copying your Siege Gang, copying Beetleback Chief, Legion War Boss, Goblin General, King, etc., just copying them out and just making the old goblins that little bit bigger for that turn is amazing. Coat of Arms, as we all know, is a stupid card. Um, I'm 99% sure that we'll never see anything like this ever printed again, because it's not just your creatures that everyone else's creatures. So you do have to be careful if you're playing against a tribal deck. Um, but at the end of the day, if you get him into play and you get it going, you're going to have this going, and this will make your goblins virtually unstoppable. Likewise, Vanquisher's Banners here, we'll choose Goblin with this. This is probably the slightly down, toned down version in my mind of Coat of Arms. Okay, all your creatures only get plus one, plus one, but when you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, which will be Goblin, um, drawing that card is really nice. The last three cards in the deck are just a little bit of finishing. So, Mob Rule, um, just gain control of everyone's creatures who've got power four or more and just attack with them and your goblins usually means that you're going to win there and then and you know if someone's playing a small deck getting all the ones with three power three or less really helps as well i have used this before now to steal 15 pest tokens off someone and survive a turn of them a t of, um, survive the next turn because basically i use the pest tokens to sacrifice off to the bombardment um, and gain that 15 life which made I survive so that was really quite good but nine times out of ten when I cast this it's going to be for the creatures of power four or more so I can go and nick them and get everything going. Chancellor of the Forge is probably not the best token and um, card in the world however having it in your opening hand and having that 1-1 one, one red goblin in play on turn one with no one can do anything about it is sometimes really quite funny um, and also when it comes into play getting the x-1-1 one, one red Phyrexian goblin creature tokens which all have haste really does help you just finish the game off it can be a fireball at some stage um, because you will be creating a lot of creatures and this will just come and kill someone off Finally, Bane Firing. Um, again, this is a card that probably shouldn't be in the deck now, but I've still got it in my real life one, therefore it's in my one on MTGO. Um, dealing X damage, and if X is five or more and this spell can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented, does mean you can win the game. It is, it is the card I finish off, usually when I'm down to one opponent in play, and I can't get through, this is the card I'm hoping to draw, and I will literally sacrifice all my goblins to skirt prospect whoever I have it in play, or I will just chuck every single bit of mana I've got into it to hopefully kill my opponent off. But realistically, with Krenko, the mob boss, by about turn 5, turn 6, you're probably going to end up with about 12 or 13 goblins in play, and your opponents are going to panic. They are going to try and kill you, you are going to lose some little 1-1s, one -ones, but just remember, if you keep Krenko untapped and untapped, tapping it again, you're just going to keep making those goblins, and your goblin swarm is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, a little short deck tech for you. One of my favourite decks. I do love this deck in real life. I love it playing it on MTGO. It's one of those decks you can go to on MTGO when you don't want to make your brain hurt too much or think too much and you're a bit tired. You can play this and it still works. So, that's the end of the deck tech. A um, couple of last things to do. If you liked the video, um, down below, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do hit the subscribe button. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know if there's a goblin you think I should have in the deck that I haven't included. Um, I'll be interested to have a look at it. And if I like it, I'll get it in real life and I'll put it on here. Um, I'd also, you know, if you can as well, go and follow me on Twitch. As I record this video, I've said it a lot recently. Um, this week, whereas this video is going up in a 
week or so's time. Um, I'm at 102 followers. I'm trying to get that number up to 150 by early October. So if you can go and just follow the link down below and follow me on Twitch, I'd really appreciate that as well. Um, and you'll see, you know, I'll beg a little bit if you've got an Amazon Prime subscription you're not using at the moment for Twitch. If you can chuck it my way, I'd really appreciate it as well so I can just keep producing the videos. But that's it from me for now. Thank you for watching the Deck Tech. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you all soon um, on the stream. But let me know what you're thinking. Cheers. Bye.